Well, it's nearly nine o'clock. Uh, welcome along to church this morning. Uh, we'll just let let a few more people join as um, as we're sorting ourselves out and that sort of thing. Uh, how's my volume? I'll, I'll check the messages in a minute. How's my volume? Is it loud enough? Please make a comment if it's if you want me to speak up a bit more. JB will check the comments. Yeah, all good. Just as we're waiting for for the time to click over to nine o'clock, um, I just want to let people know that there is a Zoom prayer meeting on tomorrow night. We gave it a go last week, um, and and it worked relatively well, depending on people's internet connection and that sort of thing. Um, it gave us all an opportunity to be together and and to pray together, um, but also. Yeah, just to, to be connected, to be praying for one another and, and um, yeah, being able to have a chat as well over, over um, video conferencing. Um, so if you would like the link to that prayer meeting tomorrow night, uh, send me an email and I can send it through to you. I did send it through to most people um, last week, but... Um, yeah, you may not have received that, and and I'll I can send it through to you again. Happy to do that. Um, well, it's good to have you with us. Um, I am preaching from Second Chronicles chapter seven this morning, and um, talking about um, just revisiting what. Um, what we looked at a couple of months ago towards the beginning of the year with our, and I know it sounds cheesy, but our 2020 vision um, and going deeper with God, leaning harder on Him. And, um, and so I want to just revisit that this morning. But, um, uh, I, but first, I would love to spend some time praying. Um, please, would you join with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to meet together this morning. Even though, again, we're separated, even though we're restricted by our, our contact, contact with other people, Lord, I thank you that, um, that you are with us, that you are amongst us, even though we're separated, um, and that you have have brought us together as a church family, not just ours locally, but globally as well. Um, that this morning there are many churches meeting in this way uh, throughout Australia, throughout the world, no doubt, and um, and we are yeah, we are joined under the blood of Christ. And so, Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for the um, for the fact that you sent your Son to die. A, a death that brings us new life, to for him to be raised again to life, and and that that um, death and resurrection has brought us peace with God and forgiveness of sins and new life with you. And so, Lord, we just want to commit our time together this morning to you, and and pray that you would um, would be amongst us. Uh, pray that you would be our our teacher and our comforter and our guide. And Lord, uh, that we would each be encouraged, not by the words that I say, but the, the words that you say through me and through your word. And, um, and Lord, we pray that we can be an encouragement to one another as well. Lord, I want to just lift up to you our, our leaders in our country, uh, both our, our Prime Minister and our Premiers. 
um, our Prime Minister Scott Morrison, Lord, we just ask that you would continue to be with him and, and guide him and strengthen him as he makes decisions that affect um, not just uh, immediate people but people throughout our nation. Um, Lord, we just ask that you would give him the wisdom of Solomon at this time and, and that he would know um, what decisions to make. Uh, surround him, Lord, with, with people who are uh, giving good advice and, um, and, and experts in their field um, giving advice as to their experience. Uh, and Lord, I just pray that you would uh, strengthen him. No doubt he's feeling tired and, and run down from, from what's happened over the last uh, three, four months. I pray that you would, would uh, give him the strength that he needs to, to get through this. And, um, and Lord, also for our, our Premier, Anastasia Palaszczuk, we ask that you would strengthen her as well, guide her. Uh, we pray that you would um, give her the, the experts around her, the advisors around her that she needs to be able to, to, um, to do what she is called to do as well. So, Lord, I just um, just pray that you would, yeah, just strengthen our leaders at this time. Um, Heavenly Father, I also pray that you would strengthen us as your church here in this place. Um, we pray that there would be a, a real sense of, of remaining connected, even though we're physically um, separated. We pray that uh, that our connection would would be not just to those who we normally talk to, but, but that we would also uh, contact those who, um, who live alone and, um, and who have, um, have not much family around them. And so we just, just pray that you would, would increase in us a desire to remain connected uh, at this time. And so, Lord, we just, let's just pray for your blessing to be upon our time together through technology this morning. We pray that you are, that we thank you that you are a God who can work through through technology and, and through um, wonderful ways such as this. And Lord, we do pray that you would um, yeah, just teach us and guide us and comfort us and encourage us this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I don't need to remind you that um, you can find us on Facebook, but also you can find us um, on our website, tenthillbaptist.com. Um, if you would like to go there and, and listen to the audio of the sermon again, you can, can listen to that through there. But also we're, we've also started a, a YouTube page that... Um, records the sermons, records our live services and and uh, that goes up relatively soon after um, it's on Facebook here live. So um, so getting into this morning's uh, message, um, there are times in life where we're we're caught by surprise by something, aren't we? Uh, aren't they? Where life throws us a curveball, so to speak. And, um, these can be positive things, they can be negative things. Um, positive things like getting a, an unexpected raise from your job or, or an unexpected promotion. Um, or even negative things like the loss of a loved one or um, the, the challenges that come with managing a business. Uh, when these things happen, it, it can somewhat leave us with a feeling of, wow, I didn't see that coming. And no doubt 2020 has been a, a year like that for you because it has been for me. Uh, we certainly didn't see the, the, what's going on at the moment um, coming at us. Uh, at the end of last year, we were experiencing a, a terrible drought and... Um, and there were, were times when we, we, wouldn't, we were unsure how long that was going to, to go on for. Uh, and this, this caused severe bushfires throughout our country, particularly in the eastern states. Um, but then there was 
the rain. The rain that wasn't supposed to fall, according to experts of meteorologists. Um, due to the drought, there were many people that suffered the loss of livelihood and, and, um, and a great deal of suffering. Due to the, the bushfires, there was immense uh, loss there and, and uh, an amazing amount of, of homes lost as well. Um, and, and then the rain started and, and it started to put out fires and, and fill dams and creeks flowed and, and, uh, and it, it filled people's hearts with a, a little bit of hope, I think. I think. Um, and, and we were beginning to think perhaps that 2020 was going to be a, a little bit of a different year. Well, it certainly has been for that, but perhaps not in the way that many of us thought. You might remember from, um, from the beginning of this year and the end of last year that we looked at a couple of sermons around 2020 vision, as I've mentioned already, going deeper with God and leaning harder on Him. And I don't know about you, but certainly this year has caused me to do both of those things in an increased amount. Not not to the, the extent of, of certainly where I need to be, but certainly to the extent of, um, of increasing my desire or, or my need for God and, um, and leaning harder on Him. Uh, this current lockdown situation has enabled me to spend more time in God's Word, uh, which is always a good thing. And these restrictions have caused me to look at ministry in a different sort of light. Uh, I've spent more time in prayer. I've spent more time um, asking others of, of what they're learning through this as well and, and uh, what God is teaching them perhaps as well. And so I just want to revisit these elements and, and um, hear from what God might, might also be saying to us um, through this, through our circumstances, through this passage this morning, and and into the rest of the year as well. And the as I said earlier, the passage that I've chosen for this morning was one that was used reg regularly towards the end of last year with um, prayer towards ending the drought. Uh, it's a very well known passage, um, Second Chronicles chapter seven verses. 11 to 16. So if you've got your Bibles there, you can turn with me to Second Chronicles. Not to be mixed up with Second Corinthians, uh, which would be an entirely different passage. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 11. It starts off and says, Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house. All that Solomon had planned to do in the house of the Lord and in his own house, he, sec he successfully accomplished. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon um, in the night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up the heaven so that there is no rain, or command the locust to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, if my people, who are called by my name, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and consecrated this house that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there for all time. Uh, this interview that God has with King Solomon answers the prayer of dedication that was made by Solomon um, as he dedicated the temple of God in chapter 6. 
And he asked God, and I'm, I'm summarizing, but he asked God to dwell in this temple that had been um, constructed. That also that the prayers of the people and that the people, uh, the prayers of the people would be answered and that the prayers of the people would be, that the people would actively pray for God's blessing upon the, the temple, but upon their lives and, and upon the, the life of the nation as well. And Solomon also prays that God would judge rightly those who had sinned and, and that he would forgive the sins of the people of the land. But then comes the part in Solomon's prayer that chapter 7 is in response to. Um, the prayer for the times when God holds back the rain and, and sends locusts and pestilence upon the land. And God directly answers these requests from Solomon with the promise that he will hear and answer prayers on the provision that the people humble themselves, repent and pray for forgiveness. And there's a number of, of principles here in this passage that we can apply to our current circumstances and our current lives as well, our global environment and to the life of the church as well. But that's not to neglect the fact that this was uh, and is a, a promise that was given to Solomon for Israel for the particular time. And so we can't directly apply this to our lives um, word for word, but there are some principles here that are, are um, still at play within our, our lives. Uh, this, this first principle that, uh, that we see is that nothing takes God by surprise. Um, our national drought last year did not take God by surprise. The, the bushfires that followed did not take God by surprise. And, and now this coronavirus has not taken God by surprise. God is sovereign over all things and he presides over all things. There is nothing that happens that is outside his will, um, which can sometimes leave us with the, the question of why is God doing that? Or of why is God doing this? But we'll get to that. Just bear with me. In all of these global events and all of these tragedies that happen that, that we see in our lifetime and, um, and, and currently, we know that God provide, uh, presides over all of this. Over all things. It's not as though God is trying to, to play catch up and um, answer prayers and, and this, this drought got out of control or the, the virus got out of control or the bushfires got out of control because God was busy elsewhere. It's not like that. God presides over all things. He knows what is going to happen before it happens. It says in verse 13, When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command the locust to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people. God says, when, not if, when I send these things to you. Um, and so what, what is said of, of, that is true of Solomon's time, if these verses are true in Solomon's time, they are also true for us now. Because God does not change in his purpose and in his uh, person or in his nature. And so we can say that God is sovereign over drought, over bushfires, over pestilence and disease. God is in control of all of these things. And this brings us to our responsibility. And here I am not keeping up with my slide again. Um, this brings us to our responsibility as the people of God at this time. This passage tells us that there is a need for us to pray and humble ourselves and repent. Verse 14 says, If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, 
then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Humility is, is one of those things that, um, that if you think you've got it all under control, if you think you are a, a humble person, um, I've said this before, sadly you've got humility wrong. Um, to humble ourselves before God means to recognize that, firstly, that He is sovereign and He is in control and that we are not. recognize that God is holy and righteous and just and we are by very nature sinful human beings that are subject to God's wrath or saved by God's grace. Jesus tells the parable about two men um, who uh, come into the temple, one a Pharisee and one a tax collector. This Pharisee enters the temple and, um, and he, he stands in the middle of the room and, and waits until all the eyes are upon him. And he prays these, these words, and again I summarize these, these words along, to, along the lines of, Thank you God that I am not like all other sinners or all other people. I fast and I tithe and I do all the right things. I thank you that I'm not like this tax collector over here. But the tax collector instead shows a different attitude of, of humility. He stands off to the side with his eyes down and, and, um, and he, he beats his chest and, and bursts into tears and says, Be merciful to me, God, a sinner. You can find that story in, in Luke chapter 18, verses 10 to 13. But Jesus said, says that the tax collector goes away more justified than the Pharisee. And it's because of his attitude of humility. The, the Pharisee has an attitude of, of self-righteousness and an attitude of pride in what he does and in what he does for God. And it's almost as if he, he comes across as God is lucky to have a, a follower such as I. He takes pride in what um, he does for God and so therefore God should bless him with uh, all the good things, all the blessings. But the tax collector instead has an attitude of, of knowing that he is unworthy and he, he calls upon the grace and mercy of God in order to be justified. He calls on, on um, God's grace and mercy and exhibits this attitude of humility. James in his letter speaks about an attitude of humility as well. In verse, uh, verse 8 of chapter 4, James says, Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. If there's never a time to, or ever a time to be reminded to wash your hands, it's now. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double minded. Be, met, be wretched, and mourn, and weep, and let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. So to humble ourselves or to show humility before God means to approach God with the correct understanding of who he is and who we are. Of, of ha having a correct understanding of God's holiness and our sinfulness. But also knowing that if we humble ourselves before God, God will be merciful and will forgive or exalt, as James says, those who come to him with the correct attitude, or an attitude of a humble heart. And so secondly, the, the principle in the Chronicles um, chapter also tells us about repentance or to repent. 
And it reminds us that God will forgive those who come to him in humility and, and uh, those who come to him in repentance as well. Repentance is a conscious turning away from our sins and wicked ways and turning towards God. As uh, God says in Second Chronicles verse seven, chapter 7, verse 14, If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, so that repentance is a turning away from sin, turning away from wicked ways and turning toward God, seeking after God, replacing that which is ungodly with godliness, replacing sin with seeking after God, fleeing from temptation to evil and, and turning to God. Excuse me. So repentance, <clears throat> repentance is a conscious turning away from sin and turning toward God, both through our actions and our thoughts, but also through prayer as well. Through seeking God's face through prayer is another principle that we can see in Second Chronicles chapter 7. Prayer is a, a, a two-way conversation with God where we present our requests to God and our concerns to God, but also where we are able to understand more of who God is and what it is that he has done for us. Prayer is not just meant to be a one-way download um, to God with just praying for this, this and this, presenting our grocery list as, as such to God. But it is a conversation where we both listen to God and, and seek after Him, either through God's Word or, or through personal revelation. We listen and, and allow God to speak to us in a time of prayer as well. No doubt many of us have spent many hours on our knees, um, either figuratively or literally, um, praying over the last 12 months. Praying while we were going through that time of, of drought, uh, praying while we were suffering from bushfires nationally, and no doubt you're praying as we're going through this current lockdown down time. But I believe that there's no better time for us to increase our time that we spend seeking God through prayer. Um, I've spoken numerous times about prayer, about its, its power and about its purpose and about the, um, the, the importance of prayer as well. And so I won't, um, won't continue harping on about that, but I will be just... I'll remind you to, to seek after God, and that involves prayer. Um, our current circumstances uh, are reminding us of these verses of when, when God sends pestilence upon the land. And, um, and it may leave us with a questioning of what is God's purpose in sending horrible things such as this upon this globe. Uh, well, purpose of, of times like these are in order to draw us closer to God. The purpose of going through um, stressful times or, or troubling times is, is in order to bring us closer to God, to draw us closer to God. There's nothing like the times of, of crisis, of um, environmental disaster, to see God's people increase their amount of, of prayer and increase their amount of, of drawing closer to God. Um, even within people who, who claim that they don't believe in God, 
we can see an increase in, in their dependence on God through, you only have to look back at, at the bushfires that we suffered um, through in uh, January. And when people were faced with a life-threatening event, even though they didn't believe in God and they said that, they still prayed to God to save them. Interesting, isn't it? And so God uses times such as um, global pestilence or, or bushfires or drought in order to increase people's dependence upon him, in order to draw people closer to him. Uh, Pastor John Piper gave a podcast in February about how we understand the coronavirus and um, and with our Bibles open. So how we understand the purpose of the coronavirus. Uh, he gave some foundational things to remember when considering disease and pestilence from a biblical perspective and why God does this. Uh, firstly, these things were that the, the creation has been subjected to futility in Romans 8. Meaning that because of the original sin of Adam and Eve, um, God cursed this earth and everything in it with corruption. Um, he cursed this earth because of their sin and everything has been subjected to this futility ever since. And this includes us as followers of Christ as well. We are subject to futility or, or to the, the fact that, um, that we are uh, subject to disease, to cancer, to, to death itself, um, and to, to having our lives threatened by environmental circumstances. But this is not without hope. And, and Romans 8 gives us that hope that one day we will experience or be free from the bondage to this corruption. The, the earth itself will be free from this bondage to corruption, to disease and to death when Christ returns. And secondly, he says that he, God uses um, sickness or pestilence as judgment upon this earth. God sometimes uses sickness as, as judgment upon those who reject him, um, such as, as the Egyptians in Exodus and, uh, and the, the people of Ashdod in um, 1 Samuel chapter 4. God sent boils upon the, <clears throat> upon the Egyptians because of the hardness of Pharaoh's heart. And he sent tumors upon the people of Ashdod because of the ark being stored in their town and in the house of, of uh, Dagon, their god. And so this was God's judgment upon these people at their rejection of him. But thirdly, God uses pestilence as a divine thunderclap. And I'll explain that a little bit more. These are John Piper's words, um, God's thunderclap. Let me explain what he means. Uh, during a storm, you might experience uh, a lightning flash or a lightning strike. Um, and you might be somewhere in the house where you don't see or, or, um, or notice the flash from the lightning. But there is no mistaking hearing and feeling the thunder um, shake the ground, hear it in your ears and sometimes under your feet. There's no mistaking the fact that you can hear the thunderclap that comes after the lightning. And so it's the same with, with pestilence, with uh, sickness, with disease, with global um, environmental things. God is trying to gain our attention. God is, is, is trying to gain our attention through 
external circumstances and, and trying to gain the attention of the world as well. Not saying that, that this is um, this is the not diminishing the the appearance of Jesus on this earth, but this lightning flash, so to speak, of God's appearance through His Son on this earth was not enough to gain um, some people's attention. And so God is using other methods to draw people to himself, both through his son, but also through pestilence and environmental circumstances. And in order to draw us closer to himself, in, draw, in order to draw the world closer to himself, and to make us lean harder on God and go deeper with him as well. And so the purpose of pestilence is for us to receive a divine wake-up call, so to speak, to see God's glory and to be drawn closer to himself, not just for us as the church, but for the, the world as well. These verses that we have unpacked this morning are attached to a very specific time-related promise to the people of Israel, and to Solomon himself and to the temple in Israel. But that does not diminish uh, the concept from the chronicler of humbling ourselves, repenting and praying and seeking after God's face. It does not diminish this concept of if you obey, you will be blessed, but if you disobey, you will suffer. If you repent, you will be forgiven, still applies to the, the people of God today and to the people of this world today. We have been called by God as his people at this time and in this place if we have acknowledged Jesus as our Lord and Saviour. And so we can apply this to our lives individually and collectively. Now, don't be thinking that, that if I obey God's word and if I do all the right things, he will bless me with health, wealth and happiness. And sadly, that is the prosperity gospel and it is false. But more along the lines of if we obey, obey, um, if we obey God's commands, life will go well with us. We will prosper in the fact that life will be better for us than if we do not obey. But we've already discussed the fact that God uses times of crisis to discipline his people and to regain our attention. And he does this in the most loving of ways. We can apply this to our time because God is, is calling people to himself. And so this principle of humbling ourselves, repenting of our sins, and, and praying is a timeless call. And then God will hear our prayers, forgive our sin, and in, in accordance with his will, he will heal our land. Uh, we're not called to, to simply ignore these promises and the great things that God did in and through his people Israel as a people and as a geographical location. But we should be encouraged now that, that God's uh, promise or, or, or God's inclusion is open to all, not just Israel. It is not just exclusive to Israel through, through Jesus the Son. Um, through Jesus, the way has been made open for all mankind to be able to know God and to acknowledge him as their Lord and Saviour. But this call remains for us to humble ourselves, to repent and pray and seek after God's face and to be praying for our world, uh, our world currently. This call for us to lean harder on God and go deeper with him is, again, one that we are reminded of through our walk with Jesus and, and through our interaction with others around us. 
for us to increase in holiness and in godliness and to become more and more Christ-like. And so this call is, is there for us to, for, to do this. And if you are watching this morning and, and you have not made a conscious decision to uh, have Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, now is the time to do that. The time is right now because I believe that we are in end times. Not the fact that, that um, the things are increasing and that Jesus will, will come back. Or he could. He could come back tomorrow. But we have been in end times ever since Jesus' ascension. There have been prophecies that have been fulfilled um, a long time ago and there are prophecies that are yet to be fulfilled and so we are in a time where uh, Christ may return at any moment and so the time is right now for us to be made right with God and we can do that through Jesus his son let me pray Lord God, we do thank you that uh, you call us to, or you have called us to be your people here in this place and, and uh, throughout the world globally. That those who have placed their faith in Jesus for the forgiveness of sins and for the uh, gift of new life with you can be made right with you and, and um and that you call us to, to draw ever closer to you as well. Lord, I just want to pray again for our, our current global circumstances. I pray that, um, that you would indeed act in our, our world at the moment. Lord, that you would heal people of this sickness that is, is uh, so rife throughout the world. But also, Lord, that you would draw people closer to yourself through this time. Both us and, and people who, who don't know you as well. I pray that there would be an increase in, in believers. Um, that there would be an increase in people coming to recognize you as their Lord and Savior. And Lord, that there would be an increase in our holiness and in our dependence on you that we would lean harder on you and, and go deeper with you. Lord, we just ask that you would um, indeed act in our, our current circumstances. Lord, we also just pray that uh, you would increase in us a desire to be humble, a desire to be humble with those around us, but also a desire to be humble before you as well that our uh, attitude of, of self-righteousness would, um, would not overshadow uh, what you are doing in and through us and what you have done for us as well. And so, Lord, we just uh, commit these things to you. We pray that you would increase in us our understanding of, of how you use pestilence and disease and, and, um, and environmental disasters to bring people to yourself. We pray that uh, we may be able to share the good news and the hope that we have in Jesus uh, through this time and through our circumstances, through our circles of influence. We commit this to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, we'll remind you again about the uh, Monday night prayer meeting. Uh, through Zoom. Zoom is an app you can have on your phone or your laptop computer. You will need a camera um, of some description to be able to use that. Um, and and I can, you can link um, and join through your phone audio and through your computer audio. Um, so I invite you to, to um, join us on Monday night at 7 p.m. for that. Um, again, our website is tenthillbaptist.com. Go there for other resources and sermon recordings um, and also 
through YouTube and Facebook. Um, thanks for joining with us this morning. Um, I look forward to joining back together uh, in person very soon, no matter how long that might be. Uh, I pray that uh, you're looking forward to it as well. I understand that there are a lot of people missing um, personal contact with people, personal interaction with people, and um, morning tea after church as well. So um, looking forward to, to how long this, uh, or looking forward to, to joining together um, again after this has all passed and um, yeah, it sorts itself out. But continue to pray that God will act in, in our lives and in the, the life of our world as well. Uh, good morning, everyone. And um, yeah, have a blessed day. God bless. Oh, um, before you go, don't forget about uh, the evening service um, you may have received an, e uh, an email from me about that um, that is happening through zoom as well um, and if you would like the link to that um, if you didn't receive that email please send a, an email to me at dale at tenthillbaptist.com d-a-l-e um, I'll go back to that slide the email address is down the bottom there um, so if you would like to join in to to our 5 30 evening service tonight um, Aaron is bringing us a message from Jesus the game changer series and so um, I look forward to to seeing what he has to say through that um, now I can say good morning and have a blessed day God bless <laughs>